Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing with our Imperial Guard armory videos with a look at the Imperial Guard equipment and the armor that they use. Now the Imperial Guard equipment is very similar to modern military equipment so I won't be covering anything that you'd see in a modern military situation such as a sleeping bag, camping tools, trench digging tools, anything like that will not be included. What I'm going to go over today are things that are relatively unique to the Warhammer 40,000 Imperial Guard. To get started one piece of equipment the Imperial Guard use are bionics. Now bionics are mechanical replacements for biological organs and limbs, usually applied when the guardsman has suffered severe injuries on the front line, but it is still capable of having a replacement fitted and being able to fight further. One thing to note is usually bionics are only given to critical members of an Imperial Guard regiment or those who are deemed worthy enough to get one. Those who are not ranked high enough may not even be eligible to get a bionic replacement, even a low quality one. Next up is the Combead. Now a Combead is very similar to a modern day short range radio. It's sometimes called a Comlink. These are small devices that can be mounted in the ear, attached via a microphone, or even wrapped around the throat and used to communicate within squads or small platoons when on active operations. Most notable usage of this are with the Imperial Guard Stormtroopers who have inbuilt Combeads in their helmets. Now another item that's used a lot by the Imperial Guard, especially their scouts, is the Camo Cloak. Now this is a hooded cloak composed of many thousands of strips of colour shifting and light absorbing material, making the wearer almost impossible to spot unless at close range or if they move too rapidly. Now the main material in a camo cloak is a material known as camoline. This reacts with reflected light to mirror the colours of the surrounding environment, allowing for near perfect concealment for a guardsman who is stationary. Now of course if they're moving, or if there's a high wind, or if there are several other situations, a camo cloak might not be as effective. However the camoline substance is relied upon to provide scouts with high degrees of cover and is well used within the Imperial Guard. Now next up is a rebreather. Now a rebreather is similar to a gas mask but it's worn specifically around the mouth and nose to filter out any toxic atmosphere or provide oxygen for any guardsman who is in a hostile environment. Now a rebreather can actually be a full gas mask, however it is usually fitted across the face and can be quite low tech and have to have an air bottle strapped to the side of the guardsman or can be quite high tech and have all the required filtering equipment within the rebreather itself. Now a variant of the rebreather is a chem inhaler. Now a chem inhaler is attached via a rebreather and is used to dispense combat drugs directly into the lungs of some Imperial Guard units. This usually uses certain types of drugs to lower the self-preservation instincts and increase the aggression of the guardsmen in question, causing them to be almost berserker in their attacks and allowing them to survive a great deal of damage whilst on the battlefield at the cost of some major damage to their internal organ, to their insides later on. Now, as I've mentioned, the chem inhalers use something called combat stims, also known as combat drugs. Now, these have a variety of effects, and not all of them are used in chem inhalers. Of course, some of them are actually used in medical applications for the Imperial Guard. Now, they do have a variety of effects, and I will go through them now. Now, the first major type of chemical used in the Imperial Guard is a type of chemical called Frenzon. Now, it's a general term for psychological control drugs, which may induce different mental states, such as frenzy, hatred, fear, or any other type of severe mental effect, which can be used to allow them to operate when they would usually feel a lot of fear on the battlefield, or interrogating a traitorous suspect. Now, the opposite of Frenzon is Calma. Now, this is a name for a general group of euphoric sedatives. Now, these are often used for medical reasons or keeping captured prisoners compliant. They are designed to release endorphins and give great pleasure to those who have been injected or have inhaled this substance. Of course, this does make them very docile and isn't really used for frontline troops as it will cause them to be rather inefficient in combat. Now, another specific drug is Onslaught. This increases the user's perceptions and reaction time at the cost of reducing all of their other mental capacities, sometimes permanently. So is a drug that's not used on a lot of permanent guardsmen that the, that the guard command want to keep around for too long. Usually it's used for those who are going into battles which they are unlikely to survive. Another drug is Psycon. Now this increases the strength of the user by adrenaline manipulation, although this usually places the user into an uncontrollable rage, and so could be classified as a friends on drug 
drug as well, although it's usually used when the guard need to deal with foes that are quite physically stronger than themselves, such as large orcs, or even Chaos Space Marines. Again, not used for the general guard consumption, it's usually used for penal regiments. Now, Reflex is a drug that increases reaction time, but it also increases suggestion and vulnerability to psychic attack, which is an interesting reaction to a drug, but it does mean that it is not used when dealing against the forces of chaos, in case the guardsman becomes tainted and is either killed or turns against their allies. Now the final drug I want to talk about is Barrage. Now this doubles the user's physical performance but causes catastrophic physical damage within minutes. So basically the user has their muscles pumped up but unfortunately it pushes the muscles beyond the ability to sustain themselves and repair themselves and will usually cause death through organ rupturing. Now these are all the combat stims I wanted to mention in this video and of course they do sound rather painful and rather dangerous to use but you must remember they're only really used for penal regiments and not for general guard consumption apart from Karma, which will be used in the medical profession. Now moving on to more technical pieces of kit, the next thing I want to mention is the Grav Shoot. Now a Grav Shoot is similar to a Parachute as you might imagine from the name, except it has a very minimised profile and is attached directly to the back of the Guardsman. Now this is much like a Space Marine Jump Pack, as it operates via suspensor fields which counter gravity, and it has two small jets on either shoulder that offer further braking of descent and some control over where they're going to land. It can hover for up to a minute, however the power supply is quite a lot smaller than that of a Space Marine Jump Pack, so they cannot be used to thrust back up into the air, they can only be used to fall, however they are quite effective in inserting guardsmen behind enemy lines. Now they're usually used by Elysian drop troops, but can be used in other regiments for quick insertions behind enemy lines. Now next up is the Medipack. Now a Medipack is something you've probably seen in a computer game, if anywhere else. Basically it's a satchel which contains medical equipment for a battlefield doctor to use when in the heat of combat. Now this can differ vastly depending on the technological background of the regiment. It can go from being a small satchel with basic cutting tools to remove damaged limbs or even cut out bullets from solid shot weaponry, to complex scanning gear and field operating devices that can quickly and cleanly operate on a guardsman who has been injured. Now next up is the reflector field generator. Now this is a small device which provides a protective energy field around the user. Now it's less reliable than a Rosarius which I mentioned in the Space Marine Armoury, however it can stop even powerful projectiles such as las cannons and plasma hits. Now of course because it's small it doesn't have a lot of charge and so will usually be used up over the course of a single battle, however they're less technologically protected than that of the Rosarius and so are far easier to operate and can be recharged. However they are still very rare devices, usually used by command in the Imperial Guard, so probably a general or a colonel will have a reflector field, but no one really below that rank will have the pull to get hold of one. Now coming to the end of the Imperial Guard equipment, I want to mention the Auspex Scanner. Now again I did mention this in the Space Marines Armoury, I just thought I'd reiterate that the Auspex Scanner is a short range device used to detect motion, invisible gases and energy emissions, and so basically it's like a sensor device enabling a guardsman to move forward and check their advance is safe before going forward in front of a regiment and so can help prevent any ambushes that may occur in transit or on the field of battle. Now the final thing I want to mention today in the equipment section is the Voxcaster. Now a Voxcaster is essentially a radio that's used by the Imperial Guard to communicate over very long distances. Now it's like the Combead and they can be linked together, however a Voxcaster can have a range of many hundreds of miles and can even be used to communicate with vessels in orbit, although depending on the quality of the Voxcaster the message may not be anything more than Morse code or a variation thereof used in the Imperium. However Voxcasters are still used throughout the battlefield and so tend to be used when a command squad needs to get in contact with other squads in the field and it's not always and it's not carried with every single squad on every single mission. Now finally today I just want to mention the armour of the Imperial Guard because it is different from that of a Space Marine primarily because they tend not to use power armour. Maybe a high ranking colonel, general or someone from a noble family may have access to human sized power armour. However again very very rare and so it's unlikely it's going to be used on the field of battle. What a guardsman may have is either carapace armour or flak armour. Now, carapace armour is the heavy body armour of the Imperial Guard, which consists of large rigid plates of armour plas, ceramide or some other strong material moulded to fit parts of the body. Now, it's heavy and inflexible, however, it's still the best protection outside power armour or a tank. Now, they can range from a full suit to just a chest plate, and wearing carapace armour is seen as a sign of status, that you've managed to achieve enough that you're qualified to wear this very protective armour and are not just going to be pushed out in flak armour. 
Talking about flak armour, this is light and among the most basic forms of armour used in the Imperium. Multiple layers of different ablative and impactive absorbent materials, designed to disperse blasts and shrapnel, have been weaved together in a sort of bulletproof vest, although not quite as heavy. Now, they have little effect on direct weapon fire and mainly designed to disperse blasts and other low velocity impacts. However, it's unfortunate that it can't disperse a lot of the energy from most weapons used by the enemies of the Imperium, and so a direct shot from a LAS gun or even a bullet will deal a lot of damage to a guard. However, it is easy to reproduce, and so the Munitorum can dish them out to any member of the Imperial Guard that need them, and thus keep the Imperial Guard at least partially armoured, even if it's not the best protection they could afford. So, that's everything I wanted to mention in relation to the Imperial Guard equipment and armour, and this is the last video we've got so far on the Imperial Guard armoury. As I've said, I'm not including a lot of things that are that are used in modern day militaries, as it will just be repeating stuff that people already know about, so there's no point in going over it. However, if there is an item or device that you think I've missed that does need to be explained in the Imperial Guard armoury, do let me know, and we may go forward and put together a supplementary video later on. However, the armoury videos are finished now, so what we'll do is go on to a Space Marines chapter video next time and then we'll start moving on to a little bit more about the Imperial Guard organization structure maybe something about the Imperial Navy but we are going to start soon on the Imperial Guard regiment videos so do start suggesting regiments I'm mainly looking to describe the characteristics of regiments from specific worlds so I'm not going to be looking directly into certain regiments however if there is one that gets unanimous votes I may go into it a little bit but I'm trying to avoid putting too many spoilers in so if it relates directly to a black library book or in any other book that deals with the Imperial Guard, I probably won't go into them in too much detail in order to avoid spoiling it for people. So as I said, if you do have a suggestion, leave it in the comments below, or go to the Vox Relay, which is the Vaults of Terror forums, where you can suggest many things, and we'll have a look and reply if we think there's anything that we can reply to. And if you do have any further questions, don't hesitate to send us a message or put a comment in the comment section below, and we will read them. So that's everything I wanted to mention today. See you next time on the Vaults of Terror.